Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, and I think I know why you're here. You came across a deal during COVID-19, or maybe you're watching this at a later date, and that doesn't exist anymore. But you came across a deal for some ammunition. You're not quite sure if it lives up to the claims in the box or any other details about it. So you did a Google search, and you're right here. Drop me a comment below what your favorite mechanical keyboard is. I rock the DOS Professional at home and work. I run the Cherry Browns at home and the Cherry Blues at work. Without further ado, we have some 9x19 to test today. This is made in the Czech Republic. This is 124 grain full metal jacket from Scorpio. Not Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons, but Scorpio. We'll throw him on the table and we'll do a little bit of talking on how we're gonna do our testing today. For our nine millimeter testing, we have five barrel lengths. We have a three inch, a four inch, a 4.95 inch, a 7.72, and I borrowed my friend's 16, so we have 16 inch today. I need to get one for myself, but we'll worry about that at a later date. We use our Pro Chrono Digital at about 10 to 12 feet. It's approximately 70 to 75 degrees and overcast today. With most of my ammunition testing, we run through the chronograph. We've got our screen back here so you can see the numbers. We check for accuracy while we're at it at 25, 30 yards with our pistol calibers. And then after that, I just give you a brief overview and final thoughts and put you on your way. Without further ado, we'll do it. Up first, we'll grab our shortest barrel length, which is our Springfield Hellcat. This has the three inch barrel. I think I'm going to officially retire the SIG P938 from our ammunition testing mainly because it's not plus P rated. And this Hellcat fits 10 rounds or more in the magazines. So there's a lot less fumbling around and this part of the video is getting through quicker. So far, I really like this gun. I like the sights on it. The trigger is very Glock-like. If you don't like the factory pull weight, Apex Tactical has a trigger kit for it, which I will talk about in a later video once I get it installed. Apparently I can't uh, shoot through the chronograph. And let me grab one more here, just so we get an even 10. Not bad. Now we'll grab our four inch barrel. This is the Gen 4 Glock 19 MOS. It has the pre-cut slide for an optic. We have an Holo Sun RDS on there from Matt Mink at Naples Guns and Ammo. A big thanks to him for helping us out with that. Oops, that one was a little shitty. Scored some baskets over there, knocking my brass into my wheelbarrow. Not bad, not noticing any weird smells from the powder so far shooting this stuff. Sometimes some of the ammunition we get in smells like super glue or other different hints of sulfur. And now our 4.95 inch barrel. This is our Smith & Wesson M&P core. This started its life as a 40 Smith & Wesson. I threw the Storm Lake, Storm Lake 9 millimeter conversion barrel in there. This gun is wearing the Apex flat face trigger. Also have the RAM module in there for that more tactile reset. This is probably my most favorite trigger setup so far. Oh, light primer strike. 
We'll give that one a second, go around here in a second. I do occasionally get that with the M&P. I don't know if the primer's harder or if the striker just doesn't have enough oomph sometimes. There we go. All right, since apparently I can't count, that was only nine shots, so we better get the 10 in there just so we get that average. 11, 16. I stopped recording the camera at this point, but I wanted to point something out. I've never had an issue with this Storm Lake conversion barrel in our MMP9, but I had some ammunition that I loaded up that was getting stuck and the slide wasn't going all the way forward. And you'll see that that, that round is not going all the way in that chamber. That one went in okay. That one, you can see how far it's sticking out. So it's almost like they're not sized correctly. That one dropped right in. That one did. So I don't know if the bullet profile is a little off or if the brass is not sized correctly. But when you watch me stumble there, that's why. And now we get into the PCC. This is our CZ Scorpion. Evo 3 S 1 S B R so many letters. This has a 7.72 inch barrel rocking various upgrades from HBI. We've got the A3 tactical grenade M lock vertical foregrip on there. This is the factory CZ stock. Got the vortex crossfire red dot on top. We'll see if we have any more feeding issues with this ammunition. Maybe it might just not like that barrel. And that's it. And finally, our 16 inch. This is a little AR9 16 inch rifle that we borrowed from a friend of mine. Very, very customized here. It only has irons on it right now, but we've got a Radeon Ambi charging handle, Ambi safety selectors, got a Crimson Trace light up front, a nice looking muzzle brake. Pretty nifty little gun. It does take Le Glock mags. Not bad velocity from the 16 inch there, over 1300 feet per second for a 124 grain. That's not bad at all. Here are our results from the 16 inch five shot groups, 0.77 and 0.49 inches. Very good. This is at 25 yards. We are using the 16 inch with a primary arms four to 18 power scope. I think it's the middle, the SL series minimal to no wind really good results we'll throw the scope on the cz scorpion and see what we get results for that but very impressive here are our results from our cz scorpion evo 3s1 sbr rocking the hera reticle primary arms 3 to 18 i misspoke in the last clip it's 3 to 18 power 0.56 and 0.79 inches again at 25 yards there is a little bit of wind right now but that load seems pretty accurate for a ball round considering if you do your work and you have a good gun you're going to get really good accuracy out of it well everybody that concludes another standard ammunition test here at the range so what i like to do gives you that good clear cut 
answers to how this round is going to perform over various barrel lengths. As far as accuracy goes, we had really exceptional results with this full metal jacket. I'm typically at around one inch or so at 25 yards with nine millimeter. I did upgrade to the Caldwell Hydro Sled, a lot more accommodating for pistol grip guns than what I had before. You fill water or sand or lead shot inside the cavity there, it works pretty good. Now we did have those failures to chamber in the M&P and best I can guess based on taking some measurements, I'll put those in picture here. It looks like our taper is around 10 thousandths bigger on the Scorpio versus say some Winchester 9mm that I've measured on this side of it. As I close, I always like to thank my Patreon supporters. That little bump in income helps me every month get out here and get things done. People who make donations to the channel, such as Sean, who donated this and the 10 millimeter. And of course, you all for watching. I gotta go do some bicep curls, and until next time, catch you at the range. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, and you came here to watch another one of my standard ammunition tests. Today, we're looking at 9x19, 124 grain from Scorpio. No, not Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons, but Scorpio from the Czech Republic. We'll throw this sucker on the table, check it. As far as our accuracy goes, we had really good results with this full metal jacket load again at 25 yards. I am using the Caldwell lead sled here. Works 